Oh, you guys, you're so fun. Hey, I just want to do a shout out to those that are joining us online because I know we've uh, got some people and, uh, you know, we're just thankful that we have that option now. It's just a great option. And so if some people don't feel comfortable being in gatherings or uh, aren't feeling well, it's just a way uh, that you can connect. And if you miss a sermon, uh, always you can uh, go to our website and, you know, check those out there. But it's good to have you guys. Good to have you online. Good to have you in the building. Um, I, uh, well, we, we ended our series, right? We ended our summer of Revelation, and we had a great summer with that. And then we've just been, you know, Greg and I kind of just pray, and we had a few guests, and uh, just kind of pray like, God, what, you know, what are you wanting to say to us before we start our next series, and, and how can we... Um, you know, what, what do we need to hear? What, what are you doing in our lives? And as I prayed about it for today, I just really felt um, the Lord speaking to me about talking about the D word. And the D word means something different to everybody, but the D word I am talking about today is the D word of disappointment and dealing with disappointment. Because, you know, I believe we are in definitely a season where there's a lot that's going on with disappointment, right? And so what we tend to do, I have, I have, I'm going to do like a little demonstration here. I have, you remember the old fashioned stamp pads, right? And, and we have, um, we're, there's just much right now to be disappointed about. I don't know if you, as I say the D word, and you think about disappointment, what you might be disappointed about, but, but we're going to use the stamp, and we're going to stamp these things with disappointment, right? So you might be disappointed uh, because COVID has changed your plans. Anybody? Right? There, there it is. There's the stamp of disappointment. You might be disappointed at how people have responded. Whoa, okay, disappointed, I get stamped. You might be disappointed in how somebody has reacted, whether it's the church, the government, the uh, corporations, different entities, you might be disappointed at how somebody has literally responded in this time, and so we mark that disappointed, right? This, this reminds me of tax season. You might be disappointed at what happened with your taxes, right? Disappointed in how that's playing out for you. Um, uh, in just a few months, there's an election coming. Statistically, half the people in America will be disappointed. disappointed. Okay, uh, there you go. Uh, I know some. Uh, uh, I have some friends that have an adult son. He's uh, and and he's not doing anything. He just sits at home and he smokes dope and he uh, plays video games all day. What do you think they might be? Oh yeah, good job. He's David's my biggest fan back there. Bless you, David. Okay. I know a, a young person that was supposed to be headed off to missions, like a missions college, and guess what? COVID canceled the program. So they are disappointed, right? Uh, I, I personally, I have seen some behaviors. Does anybody think that some people have just gone nuts? And there's some people in your life, you're like, okay, uh, that was a disappointment, huge disappointment. I know somebody who got a job in like 2019, it was a perfect job, it was a great job, and then uh, COVID hits, and guess what, their whole job, they, at least they have a job, praise God, but their whole job shifted, and now it's not the job that they wanted. It wasn't, it's not the job that they signed up for, so they are disappointed. We have lots of things. I, people disappointed in themselves. I got disappointed. Be, relationships have changed. I mean, I'm seeing even between husbands and wives, like this is a season that's been super hard for, for even families and, and uh, those with their spouses. And, and so I'm seeing even in that that people are disappointed, right? Good job. You guys did great at that. So what do we, in, in America, what do we generally do with our disappointments. Hey, post it on social media. That's awesome. Yes, we, we do do that. We, and I, I, that's, a, that's a good point. But we, we basically, we take it in, right? Here's my disappointment. I, you know, I got this. I can handle this. I'm going to process this. And, you know, I'm going to uh, spew it on people right? On social media, we can do it that way. But I, I got it. This is the way we generally can handle, that we handle through, through our lifetime in America. We generally handle our disappointments like this. We got it. You know, it's really not that big of a deal. This is just the times that we're in. This is just what's going on. It's all going to be okay. I've got the Lord. I don't, you know, it's going to be fine. It's going to work out. Do any of you 
do this with your disappointment. Right? I got to make sure I get plenty in here. I got a lifetime of these. Right? Because this is generally what we do with our, our disappointment. And so uh, I believe one day we, we kind of say, you know, what's wrong? I'm, I'm just not feeling right. I'm not sure what's wrong. And then we might realize that we've just, just put all this right in here. And it's like, oh, I'm holding and I'm carrying all this stuff. You know, disappointment is like a real feeling. It's, it's a real feeling. The definition of disappointment is sadness or displeasure caused by the non-fulfillment of one's hopes and expectation. It's an expectation. Um, it's expression of loss. It's expression of the things that we had hoped for and that we had longed for, that we you know, wanted to see happen in our lives. It's un, unanswered prayer might be a disappointment. That, that you know, we've prayed for something for so long and then it didn't come to pass. And you know, there's places of disappointment where we have. And so um, uh, over the past few months, I don't think we've not talked about disappointment in a super long time, but over the past few months, there has been much that we have seen, I'm sure you can relate, that there is to be disappointed about. And you know, scripture very much deals with disappointment. And there's healthy ways to to deal with disappointment, and there's not healthy ways to deal with disappointment. And so so we just I just felt like we wanted to take a look at scripture today and see, you know, how we can learn from disappointment, right? So uh, in the Old Testament, there's something uh, that's very beautiful that's called lament. And we don't talk about it much any longer in the church, but uh, lament is a beautiful thing. Uh, and, and I just feel like the Lord is wanting us to uh, step into healthy lament, healthy lamenting to help us deal with our disappointment. Here's an example of a lament, Psalms 13, right? Two through three. It says, how long must I wrestle with thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? Look on me and answer, Lord my God, give light to my eyes or I will sleep in death. I mean, this is like a heartfelt cry out to the Lord, talking to God, directly to God, right? The, the Bible does not you know, sugarcoat or pretend uh, about suffering. Like, we see things in the world that, that are really heartfelt, and that God gives us a way to pour our hearts out to him. Uh, uh, lamentation is literally, it's a prayer for help, a cry for help, a cry to the one that is the only one that truly can help. Right? And so, you know, the book, of, the book of Psalms, like a third of the Psalms are actually laments. Number uh, uh, in, in the Old Testament, especially the book of Job, has a lot of lamentation. Uh, let's see, yeah, why did I not perish at birth? That's a lamentation, right? Uh, I, I love this one. This is Jeremiah, because a lot of the old prophets talk about lamenting. Why is my pain continuous? Why is my wound incurable? Like I'm in distress, like they're talking to God, right? So lamentations is, is a response. Um, it's a way to communicate with our God. And in fact, it's so important, I believe, uh, that we have a whole book in the Bible called Lamentations, right? It's the, the, the book is beautifully written. It is a lament. And the way that it's styled uh, teaches us a lot about what a lament looks like. Um, it's written in a poetic format called a acrostic and using the Hebrew alphabet. There's 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet. And so using the Hebrew alphabet, literally, it'll, it uses the acrostic five times. And if you don't know what an acrostic is, I have just a simple example. You know, sometimes you do this, like you take the first letter of something and then that third with, uh, starts the word going across. Uh, when, when I had my daughter's baby shower, I had uh, a line down that said Anna Grace, and then everybody at the shower, they wrote down A stands for awesome, and G or A, N, <laughs> N stands for, you know, I don't know what it stands for. What does, what's N stand for for Anna? 
nice, she's nice, right? And so you just go down the list. So that's what an acrostic is if you don't know. But literally the whole book of Lamentations is written like that. And so in the Hebrew, um, there's an example here. Uh, the first letter of the alphabet, I'm sure you can read this because you all know Hebrew. And uh, they, they read, instead of reading left to right, they read right to left. Uh, but in Hebrew, basically, 22 letters, it goes down and uses every, 20, every letter as an acrostic. And it does that five times. And it's a lament, like every part of it is a lament. And I believe that part of this is the way that this is written teaches us that we can't, um, we can't step into praise too soon. So let me, let me see if I can explain that a little bit better. Like, like have you ever had something in your life, you know, a disappointment, and you know, you just say, oh, okay, God, you know, I forgive this person or, you know, I bring this disappointment to you and now I'm just going to praise you. And you just kind of step right into praising God because, you know, that's what, that's what we've learned to do and I think that it, it, it's hard to deal with our pain. But 20, basically, like, no, 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 we're in this, la in lamentation, like, we're naming our pain. We're naming our grief. We're naming our sorrows to God and we're br really bringing them before him. In, in a way that isn't rushed and isn't um, sugar-coated or fake, right? So that, we can get, so that we can get this stuff out of here, right? So uh, I had a quote from Eugene Peterson, what he says about that. Let me see where I, let me see where I got that. Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't know where I got that quote. Somewhere I got that quote. I'm going to come upon it, and then I'll read it to you. But, but basically, it's, it's this pattern that helps us to deal with our disappointments, right? Most people in America, we're uncomfortable with our pain. We're ashamed, actually, to name our sorrows. And so we just stuff it. We don't deal with it, or we deal with it in the wrong ways. And so God invites us, actually, to name these things. So a biblical lament tells the whole story, right? It takes our pain seriously, uh, it takes seriously that we're not just victims, but that we're also implicated in uh, the sin and evil around us, and that gives mercy and grace the final word. Uh, in Lamentations, the quote is, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul, and therefore I will hope in him. We do also see in the New Testament, we see lamenting, uh, as well, and we see it in the life of Jesus, right? And when Jesus is getting ready to go to the cross, he's in the Garden of Gethsemane, and this is in Matthew 26, he says, he, he's saying to his disciples, my soul is very sorrowful even to death. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little farther, he fell on his face and he prayed. And he says, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me. Right? Who's, he, who's he talking to? He's talking directly to his father. He's talking directly. And then even on the cross, he's actually quoting Psalm 22, which is a lament. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I mean, I don't know about you, but have you ever felt like God is not here or God's not listening to what you've been asking or you know, he's not hearing where you are or what you're dealing with? And I mean, Jesus of all people can re relate I mean, he, all his disciples basically betrayed him. So his circle that he trusted turned on him. So much of that. And so uh, even Jesus had these places of lament. So when we feel blessed in life, we just, we praise him, right? He's good. When we, when we have the opposite, which is what we have kind of in our world today. We have brokenness and suffering and we just live in a fallen world and we have this human vulnerability. And so when we experience that, we have this way that we can deal with our disappointment in a healthy way. And so um, anyways, here we go. I'm gonna take some of my disappointment, right? So what we see in scripture is that instead of you know, spewing our disappointment or like oozing it out on other people instead of, instead of, you know, posting it on social media, instead of like, have, have you ever, 
had somebody you were just you were just with and like you knew you were being attacked out of their pain like it had nothing to do with you but you were like literally being like attacked with their stuff right because they they've just their disappointment is just there but what we do we we cry out directly to God we lift up that cry directly to God this is psalm 130 out of the depths i cry to you, O Lord, hear my voice. My soul is utterly terrified, but O Lord, how long? And we lift up, we lift up heartfelt questions. Like we're asking God heartfelt questions, right? Like, have you forgotten me? Which basically, like, like Lord, I'm at the end of my rope. I cannot handle this. I cannot do this on my own. I'm at the end of my rope. You know, some people don't think we can talk and speak to God this way, but when we have a relationship with Jesus, we have direct access to God, and we can take things directly to him, and we can talk to him, and you see a number of times in Psalms that that people are being very bold in how they come to the Father and talk to the Father, like in a real way. I love it when I'm often praying for people and... uh, it's, it's so cute because they're so fluffy. Oh, God. Oh, God, you're so good. I mean, like, these are people that are going through, like, total trauma. And it's like, if I was that person, man, I would be like, oh, God. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, hello, hello. You know, I would be like, like, yeah. But no, I hear these beautiful fluffy prayers like, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. I mean, I just, I just think people, you know, in a, a, the, the way we have lost the beauty of lamenting in our society. You know, churches don't really talk about it. We've just lost, it's, it's a beautiful prayer. It's a beautiful way to come to the Father. So we ask heartfelt questions. You know, everything, uh, this is one I don't understand. Anybody got that right now? God, I do not understand what's going on. This stinks. This whole thing stinks. All that's going on in our country, right? This stinks, Lord. God, I can't take it anymore. I am so done with it. I don't, I, I don't know how to deal with this. See, we take this to God because we don't want to take this everywhere else. We don't want to spew this everywhere else, right? And so, you know, in lamenting, the cries that we hear in lamenting really cover just about everything, every human um, emotion that we feel. It covers every topic, sickness, loss, disappointment, loneliness, alienation, uh, betrayal, danger, mistreatment, aging, and even physical death. And a lament follows uh, a fairly specific pattern, usually. It's a cry to the Lord. It's a cry directly to the Lord. It's a description of a specific need. It's a pledge to trust the Lord despite the circumstances. It's a plea for God's help, and it's the resolve to praise the Lord no matter what. By the end of it, we know we can still praise the Lord. We've expressed, we've expressed all our disappointment, all that we have, we've expressed to the Lord, and then we know at the end of that we can still resolve to praise him because we know the end of the story, right? We know that he has the final victory. And so uh, Jesus, a lot of times a lament, uh, and I think lamenting right now uh, uh, is categorized in this, a lament is not necessarily for us and our own personal stuff. A lament can be on behalf of a nation. I mean, Jesus, as he approached Israel, he wept. He wept over it. As we see things happening in our country, I mean, we lament on behalf of what we see happening in our world and in our country, right? Uh, Lamentations often speaks of enemies. Uh, in, if, if you look at the format of that, in Psalm 79, it says, oh God, the nations have come into your inheritance. They have defiled your holy temple. Um, and so this is a lament for enemies on the outside, like outsiders uh, that, have, that are coming in. But there's also laments for people in our circles. You know, have you ever had somebody that just betrayed you? You know, you trusted them and they're in your inner circle and they, they've betrayed you. That's Psalm 31. I hear the whispers. I hear their whispers as they consult against me. You know, some of those, so those are uh, uh, an, another way that um, lament comes in. So the practice of lament. Some people would say that lament uh, is not acting in faith. That we're not operating and, you know, and stepping into all God has for us and it's not acting in faith. But I would say that lament 
is an act of faith because what we're doing is because we're taking things, let me see if I got any more in here. Oh, maybe. Hey, there's one stuffed in there and I can't find it, which, which could be significant because sometimes they're stuffed in there and we don't know where or what exactly it was because we stuffed it so deep. So that was pretty significant. And now I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, <laughs> lament. Uh, I believe it's an act of faith because what we're saying is God you, I'm talking to you because you are greater than the enemy, you're greater than the circumstance, you're greater than it all, and this is my form of worship. This is my form of coming to you and saying that you are God and you are still on the throne and that you are king. And so we bring these things directly to you. Things that are hard, things that are hurtful, we bring them directly to your throne. And so I say it's an act of faith, right? Uh, lament uh, is a form of worship. It's not a. It's it's not a. You know, cheap and easy, sugar coated answer. Um, oftentimes, you know, somebody will I'll, I'll watch an interaction or something, or you know, this has happened in my life where I'm struggling or something, and somebody's like, "Oh, I'll pray for you," and you get the little pat on the back, and it's cute, and you know, it's nice, and they have a really great heart. But you know, like when I'm really hurting, like I don't just want somebody to just throw a scripture at me, you know. I mean, there's just a deeper need there, and, and you know, not everybody um, can fix my issues, right? I gotta take those to the Father. I gotta lament those in, a, in, in just a proper way so that I'm not spewing that out on everybody else. Uh, I think uh, one, uh, something I read talked about uh, lamenting is kind of your uncensored, like uncensored feelings going, like being lifted up to the Lord. Because he knows what you're thinking. He knows what's going on inside. And so now it's just kind of coming out in a, in a way that's acknowledging uh, some of those things. So uh, some people would say that, uh, you know, the New Testament says, oh, forgive, just the, the new Father forgive them, they know not what they do, we're called to forgive, of course, we're followers of Jesus, we're called to forgive. It's just, it's just what we do, but uh, it doesn't negate the fact, like when, some, when, when something happens anywhere, in our world, in with, within a, a relationship, when something happens and, and we are feeling hurt or disappointed or broken in some way, um, we could go straight to the place of, I forgive them, you tell me to forgive, I'm just gonna speak that out, I forgive them, I forgive them, I forgive them. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna just say it until I feel it. And sometimes that's great, but there's other times where we actually have to walk through this, just this process of lamenting how we really feel about something before we can step into that place of forgiveness. Oh, here's my quote, finally. Uh, this is a quote from Graham, Graham Cook, what he says about lamentation, right? Uh, it simply recognizes that God is standing in the moment with us. Like he stands with us in our times. Lamentation elevates God in the presence of our enemies, and it brings out a side of God that other forms of worship simply cannot touch. So I believe we want to recover the power of lamentation in our personal life. There's many situations right now that call for that, right? Moves, transitions, abuse, uh, divorce, uh, hur hurricanes, floods, natural disasters, sickness, violence. Not only in our personal lives, but that we see around us. There's reason to lament for those things so we can step into, so we don't have it sneak up on us and say, I wonder, what is, what's wrong? I can't quite figure it out. No, oh, this stuff is going on is big. This stuff that's happening in our world is a big deal. It's a big deal, and we want to process it in healthy ways. So I want to look at uh, Psalm 10, and you can turn to it, or we'll put it on the screen. If you're at home, you'll have to open it in your, in your Bibles. And basically, this is a psalm. It's a cry out to God in the face of injustice, right? And, and I think as I read this, you'll see, you know, identify some things like, oh, yeah, that's totally happening. I can totally relate to that. I can totally see how that's happening in our world. And this is like a bold address uh, to God and really a complaint 
because uh, uh, the person, which is assumed that David wrote this psalm, is basically saying, um, you know, they're seeing all this cruelty, violence, destruction going on around them. And so it's a lament on behalf of what they see happening around them. So not necessarily a personal affront, but against ungodly and wicked men. And so let's read that. And I'm going to read the whole thing. It's 18 verses. So, Lord, you seem so far away when evil is near. Why do you stand so far off as though you don't care? Why have you hidden yourself when I need you the most? The arrogant in their elitist pride persecute the poor and the helpless. May you pour out upon them the very evil they've planned against others. How they brag and boast of their cravings, exalting the greedy. They congratulate themselves as they despise you. These arrogant ones so smug and secure in their delusion, the wicked boast saying, God doesn't care about what we do. There's nothing to worry about. Our wealth will last a lifetime. So seemingly successful are they in their schemes, prosperous in all their plans and scoffing at any restraint. They boast that neither God nor men will bring them down. They sneer at all their enemies, saying in their hearts, we'll have success in all we do and never have to face trouble, never realizing that they are speaking this in vain. Their mouths spout out cursing lies and threats and only trouble and turmoil come from all their plans. Like beasts lurking in the shadows of the city, they crouch silently in ambush for the people to pass by, pouncing on the poor. They catch them in their snare to murder their prey in secret as they plunder their helpless victims. They crush the lowly as they fall beneath their brutal blows, watching their victims collapse in defeat. And then they say to themselves, the lofty one is not watching while we do this. He doesn't even care. We can get away with it. But now is the time to arise, Lord. Crush them once and for all. Don't forget the forgotten and the helpless. How dare the wicked think they'll escape judgment, believing that you would not call them to account for all their ways. Don't let the wicked get away with their contempt of you. Lord, I know you see all that you're doing, noting they're each all that they're doing, noting their each and every deed. You know the trouble and turmoil they've caused. Now punish them thoroughly for all that they've done. The poor and the helpless ones trust in you, Lord, for you are famous for being the helper of the fatherless. I know you won't let them down. Break the power of the wicked and all their strong arm tactics. Search them out and destroy them for the evil things they've done. You, Lord, are king forever. You will see to it that all the nations perish from your land. Lord, you know and understand all the hopes of the humble and will hear their cries and comfort their hearts, helping them. The orphans and the oppressed will be terrified no longer, for you will bring them justice and no one will trouble them. So I don't know what you heard in this, but... This is a bold way to communicate with our God. And these are some things, some of the things that, that uh, David is saying here, like crush my enemies. And I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel like that, right? I know I'm supposed to forgive them, but I don't always feel like that right off. I can pretend it, but sometimes I'm thinking, God, would you just take, would you just smash them down? Would you, would you just rid the earth of our enemies? Would you just take care of this, God? Right? Sometimes we feel like that. And so we, we, that's, that's why we take those things to God and we, we lament and we talk to him about those things so that we're not then saying to other people those kinds of things. Do you know what I'm saying? And we're not getting on social media saying, oh, I, I wish that you know, God would just strike them down. That probably doesn't look good on a social media post. But we might have some of those feelings. And we can't, we, we, you know, we just can't deny those. And so we take those to the Lord and we deal with those by lamenting. It's a healthy thing to deal with our disappointments by lamenting and talking to our God. And, you know, he, he does, he knows, he knows us. He knows our anxieties. He knows our fears. He knows our pain. He knows our disappointments. And so we bring them to him. And it's him that brings healing to us. 
Tim that brings healing to us. I believe that as we do those things that our stamp, our stamp changes. And instead of, you know, the words disappointed, right? Okay, COVID's changed my plans and for, you know, ever really, some of us, COVID's changed the direction of people's lives in some way, and you know what? I have lamented that to God. I have talked to him about it. I'll probably continue to have conversations with him about it, but then my stamp changes, and instead of disappointment, I'm stamping things like, you know what? I'm content. I am hopeful. I am hopeful with what God might be doing in this season. Yeah, my direction in life has changed, but God is with me, and we have opportunity to step into all God's doing, and I'm not just walking around, you know, spewing stuff on everybody. I can kind of just take off the whole, the whole thing, so I'm not weighted down with this stuff any longer. I've dealt with it. So I, I'm satisfied, I'm hopeful, I'm content, I'm whole. Wouldn't that, isn't that a beautiful word? I'm whole instead of dissatisfied. I'm whole because I brought this to the Father. And here's the scripture out of Isaiah. And he has healed my wounds and he has bore my transgression. I mean, we, we pray for so many things, probably the worsh- uh, whoever's doing worship here could come up. Uh, I've brought this to the Father, and he's healed my wounds, and he's bore my transgression. He is absolutely big enough. He's absolutely big enough to bring our disappointments to. He's absolutely big enough to step into those places with us. He's absolutely big enough. He will listen. Here's Psalms 85. It says, I will listen to what God the Lord says. He promises peace to his people, his faithful servants. And surely his salvation is near those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land and love and faithfulness meet together, and righteousness and peace kiss each other. He's faithful, and he releases glory in our land, and I believe he wants to do that. I believe he wants to, uh, as followers of Jesus, he wants us uh, standing in the gap uh, to pray for all the things going on, but as we stand in those gaps, instead of taking those things on as disappointments, we take them to the Lord, right? I used to remember, I used to tell somebody like, I can never watch the news. I can't watch the news because it's too much of a burden for me. It breaks my heart. I'm filled with disappointment. And it's like, you know, that has changed. I mean, I can actually watch, watch a little bit of it because I can take it to the Lord in a healthy way and pray for that and lament with God over that and lament over the condition of our nation and the destruction that we're seeing. That God just, he has so much more for us. And so we're gonna, st- we're, we're gonna just stand together. And because at the end of the lament, we can praise him, that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna praise him in this place and say how great he is because above all else, he is still good and he is still great and he can still um, uh, uh, take us into new places He can still bring us out of our disappointed places. He's just big enough. He's large and in charge is what I used to say. Large and in charge. So.